Okay everyone, this tutorial is about setting up dual monitors to use with Corel Video Studio or any other video editing program for that matter. Okay, here's Corel, full screen on one monitor, and my timeline and my library over here. Because the reality is, is working with this little tiny screen over here and trying to see what you're doing is nearly impossible. So that's why you really want to do a two monitor setup if you can. Okay. The only kicker is that your computer will have to be set up to run two monitors. Okay, so here's the back of my new computer. I'm running a very nice graphics card. I can actually run four monitors on mine. But what you're looking for is if you've got another port similar to this one on the left or one of these others to the right. Because if you don't have any ports like this available to you, you're going to need a graphics card in order to hook up another monitor. Here's me just plugging in my other monitor. I was able to use an adapter to hook up my old VGA monitor, which is not a digital monitor, so it is not as nice as the one that I look at my video on, but it's perfectly okay for working with my timeline and the library. So if you happen to have one of these older monitors laying around because you've recently stepped up to a widescreen monitor, now you can do something useful with it. There's no reason for it to sit around and collect dust. The only one thing that you will have to have is that graphics card. These are cards I found on Amazon today. This one's 32 bucks. Okay, this one's 28 bucks. Then we got another one here that's 24, but they want five bucks shipping. So this is an example of the graphics card I'm running. This graphics card will suck up to 125 watts of power and your computer is not going to come with a transformer large enough to run something like this. So that's why something like this is going to be your best bet. It's dirt cheap and it gets you working with two monitors. And here's the thing, installing a graphics card on a desktop, just go to YouTube. Look at all these tutorials on how to do it. Okay, putting one in is pretty darn simple and if you don't know how to actually do it yourself I mean you're gonna have to go another route this is how I installed my first graphics card on my first computer it's pretty simple and you can call the people at AMD or whoever you buy your graphics card from and they will help you with the installation process as well and picking out a proper card for your computer so now it's just a matter of starting Corel and changing its layout but first I want to show you how to enable the new monitor to work. Okay, so in order to enable it on a Windows 8 machine, I'm going to come down to the far corner. I'm going to right click. I'm going to open my control panel. I'm going to come up here to appearance and personalization, adjust screen resolution. Here's my new monitor. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to extend these displays. Okay, I'm simply going to hit apply. Now what happens when you hit apply is the screen's going to go black. Don't let that scare you because if anything is wrong, if anything was done wrong, this will revert back to the original setting after 15 seconds. See how it says keep changes or revert? Okay. I'm not going to revert back. I'm going to keep the changes. Okay. I am now running two monitors. Okay, and just like that, I now have two functioning monitors. So as you can see, my other monitor is considerably smaller, but because I'm only going to put my timeline and library from Corel into it, it'll work just fine. You could just as easily hook up another widescreen monitor, but remember, I'm saving one from collecting dust. Okay, so I've already opened Corel. Now all we got to do is slide our timeline and our library into the other monitor. All you got to do is come up here, grab this, see the blue light up, drag it over here to your other monitor, put it up near the top, I'm going to put it up by the corner, I'm going to expand this out a little bit, same thing for the timeline, grab the timeline down here, Take your timeline, slide it over. Now the timeline is much wider because right, I have a mismatched monitor. So I'm going to stick it in the corner. 
come over here to my other monitor, grab the end of it, slide it over, okay, and just fine tune it. Take advantage of all the real estate you got. Okay, and now, let me move this over a touch too much. Let me move this over. You got to make sure everything fits. Okay, come down here, drag in some footage. Now you have a full screen viewable monitor. Very easy to see what you're doing. And just like that, you're working in full screen. Pretty simple, very basic, you know, and you can even up here, if you don't use the paths, which a lot of you probably don't, an easy thing to do is grab this particular, drag it way up here, grab your other monitor, or your timeline I mean, and now you can spread this out even more to give you a whole bunch of real estate for your timeline. Okay, when you go to change your tracks, it's going to pop up over here. Now, if you're going to work with four overlay tracks, you can really see these things and work with them, okay? To me, that's the way to fly, okay? And all you got to do is come up here to your settings, layout settings, save this to custom 3 or custom 2 or custom 1, whatever one you want to be a quick switch to. I'm going to save this one to custom one. Okay. So if you don't want to work in dual monitor mode, you just simply come up to settings, layout settings, switch to default. And then just like that, I'm back on one screen. Haven't harmed, haven't harmed a thing. Yeah, preferences, layout settings, switch to custom one. Okay. So this has got the nice big tall timeline. Okay, you can have another setting and switch to custom three. Now you have a nice big upper section and plenty of timeline. Okay, and just that quick, you are no longer straining your eyeballs to do video editing ever again. Pretty slick, huh? Thanks for tuning in. I hope this tutorial helped. Take care.